Real life street stars, man. We back. Wow. Half a million views later. Hey, what's crazy is he said he was going to bring the chain in the beepers. Man, listen. Hey, for those, for those young kids sitting at home, how much money did them hoes make you back in the day? Ooh. 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 Off the beeper. Now, I'm going to say this. I wasn't a millionaire. Okay. I, I, I didn't make millions off this thing. But I made a couple of hundred grand. Cool, man. Um, but this same beep, I want the children to know at home who watches these same beepers. Not exactly these beepers, but the beeper is what landed me in the Fed. Wow, man. Off the beeper? Listen. How no. you had to get you with the people? No, this is what they did. The dudes used to beat me, right? Yeah. And then when they beat me, I checked, I called from my prime code phone. So then the feds found out what beep I had. They found out the phone I used to use and tied it all together. So these people landed me with that life sentence. Did you ever watch The Wire? I love The Wire. So, you know, The Wire, that's how the beeper was kind of, that's how they started, you know, the wire tapping with, you know, the beeper. Right. Um, what were some of the messages that you would get beeped? Like, you know, some people would be like, uh, Oh, man, talking about the girl, put the, they put yeah, the- Yeah, they put the- uh, 304, you know, that's the H word. That's that's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just, I, I had hello, uh, love you. I remember boobs used to be, you know, you'd be able to put boobs on there. Balls, them. you could put that in there. Uh, there's a few things you could put in here. Anybody interested in this beep will hit me up. And I might auction it. I'm just playing. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. That's what they're going to want for beepers. No. Did, they ever, did you ever get a beep, a 911 beep? Like, as far as, did that message mean anything to you when someone beep you 911? No, I never got nothing like that. Okay, there, okay. All my people was good. Okay, there you go. There you go. There you go. I, I got the 411. Like, where you at? Yeah, where, yeah. Let me, tell you, let me tell y'all something. And I'm happy to say that me and Stone was out one night. No, I can say it now. Um, and we had two females, but we separated, right? Yeah. We went, I went to one hotel, he went to another. So I get a beat from him, and they got the 401 in the back. I'm thinking about Mary J. Blige. So I don't really hit him back at because I'm trying to, I'm at this hotel and I gotta make this count. Right, because he already paid for the room and everything. So later on, we get together, he like, man, why you ask my beat back? I was trying to find out what hotel he was at. So, I got da -da -da. so I'm like, well, you ain't put, our codes in, so how many? He said, I put 411. So I'm like, what that supposed to mean? So another female read that, she was like, oh, he's talking about, you know, the 411. We're like, where you at? What's the business? So I'm like, well, first of all, bro, we ain't never go to the sideline, and you ain't, we ain't discussed that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hit me with that. Nah, man. man, he hit me with the 411. I was like, what in the world? Then I realized that he was talking about where you was at, you know, one of the information. But man, Stones to come up with all kind of uh, good oh, ideas for us. Man, man um, you said his name, and I've heard a lot of stories about Stone and what he meant to L Louisiana, the culture, the music. His name is legendary. A lot of artists have mentioned him and spoke very highly of him. Who was that, and who was that to you? Who was that to uh, Louisiana, and who was that to you? That's a legend. Um, he's deceased now. Stone, his real name, Elvin Nelson, but he changed to Elvin Stone. He the one gave me the name Lil Gangsta in juvenile jail. When I broke out of juvenile jail, I shot someone. Then uh, when I went back to juvenile jail, they found out who I was. So I had to go to, a, to the adult prison. And when I went to the adult prison, like in 93, it was like 91 I broke out, 92 they got me. 92 they released me. Uh, then they picked me back up and Stone was, uh, he was, he was hustling. So he was like, man, I said, man, the people owe me probation. You take all the tickets, like, yeah, take it, come on home. Like, man, I don't really want to take that. But then if I didn't take the probation, I would have to go back to juvenile jail. But how they was doing, if you catch a, an adult charge, you can't go back on juvenile compound. So Stone was like, man, come on home, man. I'm out here grinding. So uh, he used to be in my, he used to have his money in my bedroom. He had it in a white garbage bag. You could see through it. So when I come home, bro, he was hustling. He was going half and half with a homie out there. Uh, the homie still alive, so I don't want to call his name. But uh, they was putting together 1625, 1625. 1600 I'm talking about, mm. and getting a four and a baby. So I was like, man, what the work? But I ain't gonna lie, man, man, within that month, he didn't bubble till he got a connect, he started getting bricks, bro. He came up fast. Man, um, I seen a video, and it, a lot of this video, is on, this video is on YouTube. He's like, man, I gotta do this count, and it shows boxes, and boxes, and boxes, and boxes of money. And it was long like train smoke. Like, when you playing with that type of money, what could that afford y'all 
and y'all, w- which I was doing back then, what, what did that afford y'all? What type of lifestyle? We, we was hood rich. Hood rich, hood legend. Now you could take care of people. Because one thing I would say about Stone, he showed love. Man, if you was cool with that man or he knew you, you gonna eat. If he gave you something, you gotta do right, you know, but if you think about it, man, that was some legendary stuff. You got Stone, the big homie with the money, getting the bricks, and then you got the hot boys, the boys that if you play, they come in and pay your visit. <laughs> man, come on. That was, man. So why do you think he wanted to do music? He wanted, because I remember he told me, I was shocked he was rap. I, I didn't think he could rap, but that was his way out. You know, the music game. I get a chance to do something legal, man. And I remember one time, him and I had a talk, and he was like, bro, he said, man, I don't know, bro, I'm going to keep doing this music stuff, man. He said, man, because, you know, I done left the, 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 the game alone, but I'm not seeing the money like I used to, because he was used to money. And I was like, I was listening to him on the phone. I'm in prison. I was like, wow, this is the big homie who I looked up to. This is somebody who used to give me the work, who taught me how to work the triple beam. One time he gave me something to bag up. And he had to put a penny on the back of the triple beam scale because it was all balanced. Mm-hmm. And I was showing out in front of this girl and I'm dumping. And before he went stone, come over to check on me. I had full be seven grand. I had them thing looking like 10 grand. Them thing was fat because the penny had fell off and the scale was off. So I was putting <laughs> too much coke in yeah, the back. Yeah. You give them too much. I would give them too So he had to break all that back down. And he's somewhere I got him like, all right, cool. Damn. Yeah, man. But that's you know, what you know. He he, he used to show love, man. Everybody liked him because he was cool. He wasn't one of those. You know how a lot of guys who get money and they be arrogant and cocky. Yeah. That wasn't him. He was humble, lady, love to shoot dice too. Yeah. Man, so you know, and that's another thing because you often hear about like people like him, like that were loved and people respected them in their hood, but somehow they still end up having their life taken. Why do you think, like? What kind of animosity does it take to steal? Like, even like an individual, like you say, all he did was show love, but someone still felt the need to take his life. Why do you think that is? Oh, he didn't get killed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he died in prison. Oh. Yeah, he didn't get killed. So oh, shit, he, I'm just, yeah. yeah, he can. Okay. Yeah, he nah, can't definitely, help. man. Rest in peace, Stone, man. Um, I gotta ask you. You haven't just mentioned something. You said you was able to break out of juvenile jail. Mm-hmm. How, you just walked out? No. Um. <laughs> um it's a, <clears throat> it's a rapper that the world know. Um, back then, his older brother was in j- juvenile jail with me. And he, he was like, man, I'm, we better get out. You coming? I was like, no, nah, man, I don't know where to stay, man. My mama not going to go for that. And I'm still kind of like a little mama's boy, you know, when I left. So yeah. he was like, man, I'm going to have someone for you to stay. So it was uh, Toto, he's deceased. Uh, Jeepers is deceased. And my, uh, this other guy and me, he's home now. But he, he, a lot of people know him, too. Um, I don't know if I'm at liberty because there's so much stuff going on to say his name too. But we was juveniles though, you know, but still do still be with the bull. So yeah. um, his brother came up there with a guy in a car and how juvenile was set up, we used to go to the infirmary up front to get our medication at night. So sometimes they would drive you in a, it's like this little, uh, some little thing, the truck, the uh, Suburbans. Yeah. Because they had them on a the compound because it was a big road that separated the dormitories. So, but this night, they'll get everybody out east, it's like, Two, four, six, like two, four, six, eight dormitories. Yeah. Four on each side of the road, right? So they had everybody come out. <clears throat> Just imagine all of us in two lines walking up the street, like maybe like two blocks to get to the infirmary. Yeah. The infirmary's up front where the gate at. So we get up there. It's kind of like daytime. <laughs> I'm pointing this like, like y'all got a window. <laughs> so uh my bad, y'all. It's so daytime. Anyway, <laughs> I'm saying, but you know, I'm thinking like the people can see. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, we get up front, we sit down. So they, we see a car coming. Well, they see the car coming. They got lights on. They said, that's them. I said, that ain't them. Sit down. I'm, I'm nervous, right? <laughs> so they turn around, they come back. They said, man, that's them. We just jump up, we run. So as we run in, the gate is wide open now. They park right here, the gate run wide open. They got a boot right here. So the, 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 uh, the guard come out the boot and he standing right here trying to catch them. So I'm thinking to myself, if this gate wide open and the boot right here, that means I can run around this boot to be smart. Right. And I ran around into a fence. <laughs> so now I got to hop. So now they, they didn't got around the, the, the deputy, the guard, whatever he was, and they didn't jump in the car. Now they waiting on me because now I got to hop over the fence because I'm still in the, in the jail. Yeah. I got to hop over and now he right here. So I did a little fake. He was kind of big. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Football move. Right. Jumped in the car, hit my head, jumped in the car. We mash all up. They fought. They, they get behind us. So we going up this bridge. So it's, a, it's like a four-door car, you know, with a lot of weight in the back. It's kind of slow. Damn. So as we going up, so um, my partner brother who came and got it, he's like, man, y'all, two of y'all got to get out. 
So I'm thinking my partner Toto and Jeep is gonna get up. I'm like, I ain't getting out. Nah. <laughs> Nigga. I, Cause bro, I had juvenile life at this time. So you gotta keep in mind, this like in 1991, I don't get out to 96 somewhere. Oh yeah, nah. Nah, yeah, man, nah. I ain't getting out of this car. <laughs> but when my, love, when my homeboy Toto, he's at the tent wall. He's the season. When he jumped, I was like, I gotta go with him. So he, had, I never get his, he gave him $25. So we jump out the car and as we running back down the bridge. So now we going up the bridge. So the people following us. You doing like what, 60? Like 50, man, I don't 30? Think it was 60, like we might be doing 10. Damn. That thing was slow, man. I can't tell you, we kind of go. You know what I'm saying? We going up. So we, but when we jump out, that had the people that's at the jail stop. So they think it's just us two in this car, or whatever. So now when we run back down on the opposite side of the, the, the little car, the little bridge, whatever, overpass thing, they stop. Now they come behind us, so they, they let them get away. Damn. The other ones in the car. So I said, yo, we're going to jump off. So I jumped down. Like, you know how, how them little things go down this way, the car's way, the, the yeah. bridge, like? So I jumped down. He jumped down. We run the back, yo. Back then, we used to wear red t shirts with LTI on in uh, Louisiana Training Institution. So uh, okay. we take our shirts, so we hop over the fence, go in, in this little shed. I used to keep toilet paper in my back pocket because he's running out of toilet paper in juvenile a lot. Mm. So we go into the shed. In the shed, they had a hole in the, in the, in the, in the, like, the little roof, in the roof. So we go up the ladder, we hide up there, we wait. I come back down, the people in the backyard, no, we hear the seal, or we, we hear one of them deputies next in the gate saying, they're around here somewhere, but we see their shirts. So I'm like, mosquitoes eating us up and everything, right? I'm laying down. So he like, Lil, Lil, because I was real small, so just called me Lil too. Yeah. Lil, you, you woke? I'm like, Man, I'm saying to myself, man, you running your mouth, them people come in and find us. We're going to fight right here because you got us busted. But mind you, now, Toto used to box, but I didn't care. I was like, he wants to beat me up, man, because you done got us. I'm going back to jail now, man. I'm fight. trying to get back to that know you. So, because um, it's crazy because I was claiming the Magnolia and I wasn't from the Magnolia. And while I was in juvenile jail, my mother moved in the Magnolia. So oh. I'm like, oh, I got an address because back then when you claimed that know you, I'm going to get back to the story, y'all. But back then when you claimed that know you, you had to have an address because the homie was busty. Like, oh, you from the Magnolia? What's your address? Mm, but I had tough. an address. I, had, I used to claim the old side where my partner Chill Will on T Lear. So I was good. And then my, my best friend Hank, mother lived across the street. So I was cool, but I wasn't really in the know you. Mm. But while I was in juvenile, my mama moved in the, in the know you. Then you so, go. We waited that night, we come down out the hole, we grab a shirt, put on, we hop over the fence, we run up front, and there's a dude and a chick walking by. I said, come on, we run back in the back. So we wait, and we go back up front. It's a guy, I said, hey, hey, come here. I said, man, can you give me a screwdriver? Because I was good with stealing cars back then. I said, because I want to steal a car to get from around. He said, ah, hold up. He went and got a screwdriver. He said, look, don't steal them from around here. Go wait in that abandoned house. <laughs> yeah, because this is his hood, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So he's like, but my partner gonna come back and pick y'all up. Just go down there on the corner waiting. So I was like, all right. So we run down the street. We go waiting in the house. I'm chilling. I see a police call. I say, oh, man, he set us up. But I got scared, but they just was patrolling the area. Yeah. So um, the guy pulled up in a, in a brown uh, Cadillac. We jump in the car. We mash out. But he tried to bring me to uh, one of them ballrooms back in the day. They got the window right here where they could look out and see their car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old, I was like, man, I'm not doing that. Them people ain't come out and shoot me or something, Can't right? do that. Yeah, bring me somewhere else. So he brought us to another ballroom where the car's on the side, across the street, like a little avenue. So we run across the street. We take a uh, little rock, and we used, to, we used to take like three, four little rocks and blow them out and shake them and throw them against the wind and they bust. The break, oh, shit. The shadows. Oh, shit. Yeah. Some people use the spark plug thing. Well, I never used that, the little B. We just take three, four rocks, shake them up, and just throw them against the wind it's going to shatter. Pre-game. Yeah, it's going to break. Don't do that at home, y'all. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so um, we steal a car. Something this guy about to show us how to get on a, on, a, on a highway to get home. Man, this man bring us to a, a, a park like to search the car. So we shake it down, find boxes of oil and all that stuff. Well, my bad, cause I'm from New Orleans. We say Earl. Uh, yeah. Boxes of Earl. <laughs> um, he take all. He take a little big machete that was on the driver's side, and we give him five dollars. So we hit. The, he say, look, get on the highway and go. So I was like, all right, cool. We got on the highway. We, we, we make it to New Orleans. We were so happy we made it to New Orleans. We jump out the car and we walk about a mile to the Magnolia instead of driving to the Magnolia. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, we get there. And when we got there, that's when the Magnolia beef with the tent wall, man. That was some, man. That was so crazy. But my partner Toto got caught the next day. Damn. How did the next the, day he got busted? What the fuck? Did he go to Blockbuster or something? No, what he did, <laughs> it was this OG out of out, out our city. Oh, he was an OG back then, but he was a gangster named Levi out the Cali who Master P rap about. Mm. So Toto used to run with him, but Levi, even though Levi was a little older, no, that's mine. That's me going on. Oh, yeah. Hey yeah. man, listen, man, <laughs> me baby. So uh, uh, so Toto was a little older. So uh, that's my prayer time. So uh, uh, Levi was a little older. Toto was young, but there was all of them slinging that gun. So Toto was like, I'm going back to my Levi. I was like, All right, you come back here tonight. So I don't know. He didn't make it back because the police and they knew who he was because he was young and wild. Yeah. So he get arrested. 
Now, mind you, the, uh, the next day, I mean, that same day, my homies, because they beat me with this present, they give me a 38 with one bullet. So I take the 38, put it in my back pocket, because we got a block party going on. And inside this block party, you got groups of females and groups of people dancing. But the dance they doing, they didn't do that before I left. So they got their foot on the wall, hands on the ground, shaking their butt, and they just, they just pee popping all over. I'm running from crowd to crowd. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because this is blowing my mind. Because I, I got mind you, when I left, they I ain't seen people popping. Yeah, I, no. I ain't seen people popping before. No, they wasn't doing it. Well, you know, Luke had it that popped that, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. but I'm actually seeing my home people in my project doing this stuff. So I'm like, whoa. So, uh, yeah, so that night, he didn't come home. So he called him. He said, let me get him. He got busted. So Levi, we could cock this plan to go break him out of the jail. Oh, y'all about to get him out of jail? We about to get him out. Damn. We got to go break him out. So now we got a raggedy Tudo uh, cutlass. We got a big machine gun, we got my little 38, we got my homegirl, she gonna play like his mother, and we gonna run in this youth study to get him out of there, right? You still got one bullet. Hmm? You got one bullet. One, yeah, one that's bullet. all I had, yeah. Oh, God Because I wasn't really worrying about the gun, the bullets, I was worrying about these women, I'm on escape, and I'm trying to hide out. There you but go. now I gotta go get my, 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 my best friend out of here. So, um, but the car, before we could pull over my pro out the project, the car, I keep clunking out, you gotta crank it back up, you drive a little bit, you turn it. So like, I said, oh, check this out, check this out. Because now what we about to do is, we gonna get this fake ID for her to play like his mother, and we got to run down. We gonna when they open the door for the go in this juvenile youth study, we gonna run in there with the guns and get him out. So so happened we was taking a little our time, so they wind up transferring him to the juvenile courthouse. Now when you get to the juvenile courthouse, mind you, that's on Padre. That's was like down for the federal courthouse, yeah. and he got police be out there. So now we about to try to rob the get the people get them oh, from the van here. This a movie. But the problem is, I'm like, I'm the only one in the car thinking. I'm like, cause I'm thinking that, I mean, I just broke out. I don't want to get in trouble again, right? I said, yo, y'all check this out, man. Y'all know we got to go to the court where the police be at. And we got this big machine gun, this car keep breaking. So what do we get to the high speed chase? So Levi was like, man, yeah, you right, you right. I'm like, Phew. they let me out of here. Yeah. So, <laughs> if Next Toto, time. Listen, if, I, if Toto knew that I was the reason that we ain't gonna get a boy, he'd be mad. But he, you know, somebody, you know, somebody killed my brother, man. But uh, Oh man, rest yeah, in peace, rest in peace. He wound up coming home in 96. This was a 91. Oh, so he served, yeah, he served the full yeah, he five. Did yeah, he did it. He did all his. He come home. Yeah, man. Oh, man, that's a movie, man. Yeah. That's a movie. How long did you stay free? Yo, let me tell you something. It was four of us that broke out of juvenile jail. Toto got caught the next day. Jeepers got caught a month later. And my, the, my, my homie that's home now, he got caught three months later. And I, I got caught five months later. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Yeah, I say you did pretty good, but damn, everybody went back in. Yeah, yeah. But see, I did some goofy stuff. That's how I got caught, though. Hey. Ain't you going to get caught eventually anyway? Well, it depends because you could, I was a juvenile, so have I stayed out of, had I stayed out of trouble? Yeah, I stayed out of trouble and laid low till I was 21, I'd have been good. Oh, wow. You know, I was a juvenile. Did you ever, um, or anybody around you, ever plot to break out of prison? In juvenile or no, adult? No, when you actually, as a, when you got to an adult. Uh, yeah, I know, listen, I got a homeboy. Yeah, how far did that get? Not far, because this, <laughs> because this is a problem, man. You know, you got guys that are playing stuff, and then when they go to talking to other people about it, and you got people that's miserable in jail, and they want to get, because when you go and rat to the CO, you get favorite. You know, uh, favorite okay, okay. So they want their little extra uh, little, so they go drop a bomb, dime, and then they scoop everybody up, like, uh, for example, me and one of the homies, we was trying to break out when I first got locked in the Fed out of uh, San Bernard Parish, right? But my homie Junior was laughing at us because we in the dorm, right? And what was the plan? This was the plan was the, we tried to, we had some hacksaw blades sent in our shoe. But the thing was, we were trying to saw through the shower, right? Now mind you, when we get through the shower, the rec yard out here, but there is a door right here that's locked. So my partner was like, man, y'all breaking in jail, man. You're breaking into in jail. jail breaking break, in jail. Break, you know what I'm saying? About to break into jail. How y'all gonna get out that door? He's like, man, I was like, he right, man. I was mad, but I was like, he right. So we making all this noise. We cut the shower on. We, you know, we, we don't have a whole. Oh, y'all started the plan. Y'all, like, y'all going through yeah, it. Yeah, we was going through with it because, like, they just let us get packages back then. They don't do it no more. But so my partner, daughter, sent some, you know, them little blades that you hook up to the little saw that you saw, like, yeah. He had those in the shoe, so he got them. And we was taking out on table, taking long too, because man, they look, you trying to cut through the iron, you know what I'm saying? Basically. So I had got like, you know, the shower had the little holes, it's like a little box, it had the little holes yeah, in the yeah. shower. How many holes did you get? Or whatever. Yeah. So man, I had to cut like maybe three or four holes, I come down, and it was taking long anyway. <laughs> so the guy, it was a Latino guy, he caught one of that, and he told, and he locked my uh, old head up, and he went to 
the whole uh, behind that plan. Damn, that dirty Mexican. Ain't work out. Dirty Latino. <laughs> God damn yeah. it. He got famous. He got yeah. famous. Now, that, man, listen, that's why we kind of here, man, because we know you got stories, but I'm just curious. Since our last interview, did you get a chance to look at some of the comments and uh, what was some of the responses that you saw that was kind of, you know, forefront with your last interview that we did? I, bro, you know what? Like I say, I get more love than hate. Exactly. So uh, what I do for a lot of people, I try to answer a lot of I do the, the thumbs up and the heart. I hit everybody. Even the negative, I just hit them all. But it's just, that, listen, man, I, let me tell you something. I watch that thing just about every day. Oh, love. I said numbers, right? Love. I said, man, real street, uh, real life street star jumping, man. I said, look at this. I said, man, man, half a meal. But I was disappointed because I'm like, man, I want to be at a million right now. <laughs> Talk about it. We you want know? you to be at a million. We want to be at a million. Facts. <laughs> you know, I know it's a lot of people out there that love me. There you, know you go, now for real. You know, and they love the real life street star. So I'm like, man, y'all got to get them numbers up, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Now Talk about it. Tell that them. That thing been jumping. I was like, well, okay. It's a half a meal. I say, man, this thing rolling, man, you know? I saw you responding to a couple of people, like, giving, like, I'm like, damn, gangster responding. Like, yeah, I do that. I, listen, man, I'm regular. So when them people be, a lot of people, when they hit me on my Instagram, I hit them, they like, oh, thank you for responding. I'm like, why well, wouldn't I respond, you know? But in their mind, see, this is the problem. When it be the 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 the, uh, the people on the outside, um, I don't like to use this word, the fans, right? And they put you on that pedestal. So now... People put me there like, okay, you the celeb, what you doing this? No, man, I'm a guy that was part of history, Cash Money Records, the Hot Boys. I went to prison, had a license, found a way to get out of prison, and I'm just telling my story. Eventually, if somebody else gonna come along, BG, Big Meats, well, they're gonna kick me out the sofa. Yeah. Keep me out the sofa, baby. So yeah. give me my five minutes of fame now, make the best of it, do what I can do, yeah. but at the end of the day, I'm enjoying it right now. So I like to engage with the people. There you, know? you go. That's why I answer a lot on back. Well, definitely. That's why you're here, man. Uh, one thing we wanted to know was um, with the Hot Boys, when uh, Birdman started the Hot Boys, you being a street legend, you being in the streets, who would you say um, out of all the Hot Boys was closest to the streets? Like, who, who would you say was like that? Like, they was, they was in the rap, but they was really on the level of still in the streets. BG. Yeah, that's the one that everybody seems to. BG. Yeah. But Turk as well, because Turk was younger than BG. And the thing is, Turk out the project. Turk stayed on the old side of the project. So Turk was in traffic, right? But the problem, the good thing, the, not the problem, the thing BG had over Turk was BG was running with me. So it was a difference. You know what I'm saying? Turk was young and wilding through the project doing this thing. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it now because Turk, he, he, he talked about his, his, his drug. Shout out to Turk too, man. Young and thugging, baby. Yes, sir. Um, Turk, uh, Turk, when Turk used to go to school in the morning, Turk would come out, right? And he would go hide in the hallway and he had this little fat little guy. I heard the guy deceased now. But the little guy used to go to my co defendant and blabber and get to work. You know, and so Turk, get, they get what they got to get and, and go on and blabber one day. He said, the fat boy would go in his hallway. So Blabber said, boy, come on, I got to show you something. You ain't going to believe this. So I wait one morning, I'm like, what are you talking about? So he, the dude come, get some stuff from Blabber, go to the same hallway, right? So I'm watching him. So I'm watching the hallway. Here come the little dude and Turk come out. So I don't say nothing that day. I wait for the second day, because I'm like, well, maybe Turk was in by somebody, whatever. Second day, I see him like, well, the third day, Turk, man, what's, what? man, man, don't tell baby now. All right, man, hey, and I just, I never say nothing about it today. He just, Start doing this thing and got out there with it. I'm proud of him, though. What is your favorite uh, BG album? Chopper City. It's two of them now. Chopper, Chopper City and Chopper City. Ghetto. Oh, there's another. It's, I want, I'm talking about the Chopper City when he had the brand in the Chopper Bullets, mm -hmm. the underground one. Okay. Hard. And before you touch base on that, that story you just said about Turk, um, he had mentioned a story on Vlad where he... Uh, he said he saw Yellow Boy was looking for him. He stayed in the school. Like he like, I ain't going out there. And when it when it comes to uh, like I don't know I don't know if you heard that story, but when it comes to uh, like the fear that people put in people's hearts in just New Orleans, just the fear that whether from a kid who's 16, 17, like even you, did you have fear that you put in people's hearts where they're like I ain't going down that street. What are you saying that someone that was I scared of someone? I'm not no, just no. Was someone scared of you or just other people? Like certain individuals have that kind of fear in people. Like I, I ain't coming outside. Like I know it's yes, but the thing was this with me. 
out of everybody I ran with, I was always the humble, the cool one. Oh, okay. Like I would speak, I was like one of the ones, because I was always small, you know? So I was always one of the ones that, uh, I'm gonna give you the respect, but when you jump out there, then there's consequences behind that. So you got the hot boys that was, some of them like doing it, he like, he had no tolerance, he had low tolerance for the bull. Mm. Sterling was one of the ones like a fight, like the fight a lot, and Mosquito just, he gonna pull the pistol, you know? So mm. I'm one of the ones, well, hold on, let's, think, let's talk about, nah, listen, this is what it is, you know? Um, then I ran with some of the biggest, some of the big gangsters in my city, Black and Mo, you know, Eric mm. Maurice, you know, Gaylaw, he's still alive, Gaylaw, you know, but uh, oh, shout out to Big Poker, man, because Big Poker, a lot of people don't talk about Big Poker. Shout he out to Big the Poker. Magnolia, man, he's around with no limit, but he a legend out the, out the project. Definitely. But um, I ran with a lot of the old gangsters, so I've heard stories, people be like, oh man, I was scared gangsters, we thought you were going to come do this and this, but I've never like witnessed it. What, what makes a legend for you, like, what, how do you define what a legend is, a street legend? I used to always tell people when I was in prison that I'm a living legend, right? Um, a legend is someone that is known in your city, he got money, uh, how they, the new thing they say now, he was a stepper, you know, yeah. um, someone that had the, 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 the nice car that had the attention of the people, you know, because you got guys that was in the game that was getting money, but people don't know them. So now it's like, okay, yeah, you was getting money, but you was underground. Whereas, you know, in today's society, when you out in the forefront and people know who you are, okay, man, he a legend, man, because he did this, this, he came through with the rag tie. He's the first one with the TVs in the car. He's the yeah, first doing one. Doing some legendary know. shit. Right, you know, so. Did, was there a situation where you had to, you pulled that thing out, planning to use it, and someone talked you out of it? Hey, bro, it was a rule back then. If you pull it, you got to squeeze it. Mandatory. Mandatory, but that was unheard of. We were, we, see, they got to stay on, they be called and clutching. And man, you, we didn't do that back then. When we went to go get out, man, we get, we to get, listen, let me tell you something. It's only one guy, two guys that I shot that lived. And I was like, after that, I pledged lead to the gun. I would never let somebody else live again because I know you're a target. You know what I'm saying? So, now nah, I ain't never did nothing goofy like that. Yeah. No. Hey, explain, explain what is the, like, now that you out, what is the new shit that you see that's just goofball shit? Man, bro, the social media, period. Like, these guys getting on social media, they putting their address on there, they putting the, 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 the uh, they, how they say, drop your location. Yeah, you drop man, your location. Yeah. bro, ain't no way in the world I'm about to tell somebody, oh, I'm going to be at this club tonight. Man, listen, man, you know how I do be laying? Bro, let me tell y'all something that I ain't never tell them. It's gonna be in my document. I'm gonna drop something on y'all. I was at a club, uh, oh, I heard that. I was at club, uh, I was at Club Detour. Club Detour is two blocks, like straight down two blocks from the Melford Bean Project. We was beef with the Melford Bean Project. So I'm in Stone Provide. He had a black provide with the gold edition one night. I leave my gun under the seat. I had a Mac and I leave it under the seat. And, uh, I, but I park up on a neutral ground, right? Right across the street from the club. It's on Mother King, Saratoga, but it's a house there now. So, um, I'm in the club, you know, hanging out, girls on my line, I'm trying to see who I'm gonna hit tonight, you know, who I'm gonna go to the hotel tonight. So a dude come in, yo, gangster, you in the black provide out the black truck out there on the news? I said, yeah, why, what's up? He said, man, it's like about four or five dudes at the mill uh, looking in the truck, man, they got choppers. So they got a police name, Robbie, out the mill, right? I said, Robbie, listen, man, he's walking to my truck. Then what's what I said, man, you know how these dudes be hating on me, he's walking to my truck. So I got escorted to my truck, then I gave him a few dollars, so he followed me from, Motor to King in Saratoga, we turned on Sound Boulevard to Sale Street, and he, he let me go like four or five more blocks, and I was able to get on away from there. Yeah. So, um, I was just gonna ask, you know, we talked about the social media. I seen a picture of you recently, where you was in the club with two uh, automatic weapons. So, nah, that was, that was an old picture. yeah, that's an old picture. Yeah, but you know, no, no, of course not. Do you think that you would have been one of the cat if you was back then now today, the the gangster that we know back then today, do you think that would have been a picture you posted online? No, because right now, and for all y'all who are out there doing it now, pay attention. The feds are watching. They take those pictures, like my son is in the Fed now, my youngest son, my youngest boy, I got five boys. Mm. My youngest son in the Fed fighting the Rico, he got two murders. And he, out of the whole, it's 11 of them on indictment, he the only one in the indictment where the Feds take 
his Instagram and all, I think a Snapchat, whatever the other old stuff he had, where he posted those foreign guns of different names they got now. I was, I was called, I said, bro, don't be doing, oh, dad, I don't know, I just ride my dirt bike all the while. He was, he was, he was wilding, you right. know, and they took, it's in the indictment that the pictures he posted with the gun, they using that against him. It's crazy. We was debating, how did you get in the nightclub with the, <laughs> with the two choppers? Because, all right, <laughs> let me show you how does that happen? But that's a wild ass. <laughs> Listen, but, all right, back then, you gotta understand, back then, you, uh, cause I don't, the, the per, uh, person that still is living now. So, um, but we had females, right? Mm-hmm. They had purse, like we could, like I got stabbed in the fair. What they do is they gonna search the guy, but they don't search the women. Yeah. So the guys out the MILF, who we was beefing with, they were small, they, they called us slipping. Uh, it was me, Mosquito, OG, Booby Black, we was in a super dome, the dome had a fair call, it was a Coca-Cola fair. And we saw some guy we were beefing with, and my thing was, we all had a thing was, where we see you is on site, where we gonna fight, we gonna stay, we gonna do whatever. So I ran up and hit one of these guys, man, the other one, he upped the knife. I didn't see the knife because he had his head down, he hit me right in the chest, right, I got a mark right here, where my lungs collapsed and everything. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, and it's the same guy in jail, now in jail, the Magnolia, Melvin, and the Kelly, we the only ward, the third ward that got three projects in our ward. I used to help him fight in prison now. Mind you, not in prison, in our parish, like y'all would call the county jail. We the only state that have parish. So in our jail, I would help him fight because he's out the third ward. A few, like a month or so later, here we in the fair now, we beefing now. Yo, you out this project, I'm out this project, so no more cool, you know. That's crazy. And he stabbed me, he the one stabbing me. I helped him fight in jail. Yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned a lot of beefs. Uh, you mentioned the Magnolia versus uh, Tenth Ward. Uh, in the '90s, what would you say was the probably most intense beef between projects or hoods? Not with us. Do not, I include yeah, me? Not including you, but also the one you probably were involved in as well. See, the Magnolia we had beef with. The Magnolia didn't beef with the Seventeenth Ward before. The Magnolia didn't beef with the Tenth Ward. The Magnolia beef with the Melphamine project, the Calio project. Which uh, one was the most intense? Like where you're just like, man, this is a war. I'm gonna say the tent war because one time they came back there on a truck cranking up a gun. This is back in the early 90s. Again, yeah, like, them boys wasn't playing, man. Them boys would come back to our project. This is, and and I say our project, but back then I had just like really became a, a Magnolian. Can I say that? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and I was young, you know, I was a youngster, but I was, I, was, I was squeezing, but I was young, you know, so I'm seeing these guys coming through, they, they tan my project, you know, tan the project up. So as I start, you know, getting my footing, you know, hold up, man, it's, it's, it got a line now, y'all, don't come across this, all right now. So we start going back, you know what I'm saying? And you got, then the, we, the Melphamine project clicked with us and um, they start going back there. And I got two friends, two of my, two of my best friends, man, one was my co defendant for juvenile, they been locked up in Angola for 30 years for a murder they didn't commit. Uh, in the tent wall, they didn't commit this murder, but the guy who was in June, I didn't say it was them, and the guy who did it, he's up there with them right now. Mm. They've been locked up for 30 years, man, for a murder they didn't commit. But I would say the tent wall, the tent one of Magnolia. Um, but it's, it's up for, uh, if you ask someone else, they gonna say the beef with us and the Calio. Because the Calio guys, they were feared, um, just imagine how people talk about me. Think about them. Exactly. I'm talking about, and some of them, I, my, I think, was notorious than me, I would say. It was, they had some gangsters back there, but the thing was, we ran together. We ran together in 93, so it was like, we was clicked together, so if we had beef, if I couldn't get to you, and you go in that cat, you think you're going to hide from me, and you'd be like, yo, you know, such a back, I crush it for me, I got you. You said we trade and we helping each other out, but we fell out when they killed Mosquito in uh, 96. You know what I'm saying? So. People would say the Magnolia and Calio beef. I think it's the tent wall and Magnolia beef. You know, but. What is, you, what is something that you've seen start a beef that was like, I can't believe we out here riding over this. Like, I just can't believe we about to be into it for a couple of months behind this. Honestly, man, nothing. Cause back then we was young and ignorant. We didn't care. We had a thing, this, this our thing, we had, it's in jail and on the streets. Whether my homeboy ride or run, we riding with him. And now you run, we'll take you later. Man, you know, you down bad for that goofy stuff, but we ride. So back then we was triggered. We just wanted to beef with somebody. We didn't care. Now we got into it with the Gotti boys, you know, at the mill. So 
And they had a gang fight around a club, around a detour I'm talking about, in the milk, like two blocks from the club, you know? So we didn't care back then. We didn't care what the beef was. We just needed somebody to go test our weapons out on. So we didn't care. <laughs> Wait a minute, so you buy like a, 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 new, a new gun, and be like, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't use this hoe yet, and... Man, listen, it was so many, let me tell you something. It was so many guns in my project. One time I had a 270. It, it took five bullets, had a scope, you could hit the person, like, hit the little sniper thing on it, right? It was a big old gun, so I liked the gun because it was big. You could hit a person a long ways, right? Yeah. Man, I walk in the courtyard one time, my gun just laying in the grass, and that's just how many guns we had in the project. Damn, laying in the grass. Just laying in the courtyard in the grass, like, nobody didn't care about that gun. How accurate were you? Um, I'm a, see, I wasn't one of them, I never did a drive-by. When I was in the mud, when I was in the streets, I'm going to get out and walk up because I know if you go shoot at somebody, you miss them, you the target. So you never went to like actual gun training, gun ranges? No, yeah, like in the, the project. In the project. <laughs> we, shot, <laughs> we, we shot some shit. <laughs> yeah. Don't people ain't about to let us go in there and do a little talk down, no, man. No, we ain't do that. What's your definition of a street nigga? Now or then? Both. <laughs> oh. Um, well, back then it was somebody who hit the streets, people knew him, knew not to play with him, because like now with the social media, you got you got these fake pages, so you can hide behind them and be uh, internet gangsters. Back then, you had to stand ten toes down and let a person know, oh, this is me, this is what it is, this is what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like when when we made a move on the MELF, they came and shot up our party to shoot down any, anybody to shoot it up, right? So we let them know, look, man, it was that was us that did that was the you know the, us, we did that. So now they know who to come looking for now because don't come back here shooting at anything and anybody, you know. Back then you you was it was it was man on man. Now it's all kind of sucker stuff going on. I'm happy I'm on the couch now, man. I'm happy I'm out of the way, bro, because there's a lot of stuff that go on, bro. I be like, bro, ain't no way in the world he'll see tomorrow playing like that, you know. And one thing I learned about the game, it's somebody in your hood who don't like you. Always. And somebody in your hood who need money. Always. You know what I'm saying? And I be like, boy, it's so it's so easy to man, listen. I am so happy I don't listen. Man. Hey, listen, and they try to always pull you back, just pull you they back ain't down. Pull me back. Like, <laughs> How can I miss all this? And you think I'm gonna go back to prison 20 something more years than the, you just had Hurricane Chris right we here. We just had Hurricane Chris hey, right here. Hey, 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 hey. Shout Mr. Out hey, Hurricane Chris. Nah, for real. Louisiana in the building, goddammit. Shout out Hurricane Chris. Hold up. Shout out to King Rockstar. Nah, hey, there you go. Talk about Bro. it. Talk about it. Bro. <laughs> nah, for real. You think I want to go back to jail? I'm around some young legends, man. Man, talk about it. Talk I'm enjoying about this it. stuff, boy. Now, Old man like me. Talk about it. Nah, for real. Enjoying, enjoying the fruits. Man. Um, oh, y'all you, make hey, sure y'all get no, not for real, gang. We, no, hey, we, hey, we gonna go all the way through there because I want them to know, gangster, the original hot boy on YouTube. We are gonna go all the way through yeah, there. Get that. Um, what well, you responded to, uh, Wack One Hundred? Yeah. When he called y'all fake brothers, um, you right. and you and Birdman. Right. <laughs> that was long overdue. Um, yeah. When I first came home, Wack, and let me say this here, Wack produced a text message. I believe that text message because I know the gang baby played, mm. and because you gotta keep in mind. Birdman and I used to like, bro, we used to get 300 minutes in the feds. And honestly, I won't say from 150 to 200 of my minutes to go to him. That's if right. I would sneak and call somebody else, call out of Bernardi, he'd be like, man, what's up, man? You call all them H's, man. You ain't calling me. And bro, I used to have to call this man just about every day. That's how tight it was. And I used to give him game. School him, look, look, do this, do this, do this man, look, do this, do this. So I know the little crackhead mind games he played. And I know how people dance to his music. So when Wag produced that, I was like, all right, cool. But I'm like, oh, who is this guy? You know, but. I'm not really thinking about it. So now, once I start getting hit, Queen France hit me to the social media. Mm -hmm. So once she hit me to the stuff, I'm like, yeah, but I ain't in that. But then I start seeing this is the way of life. This is where people at. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I got a non-profit organization. I want to reach out to the at-risk youth. Yeah. But first, I got to get out. I got to let people know who I am. So when she started hitting me, showing me, like, I'm still learning. I don't know how to work the iPhone. So I, I put that down. I got an iPhone 13 at the house. I just, I don't know how to work that. But Shout my out reality, to Andrew. I'm good Shout with that. Shout out to Androids. Yo, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, I can work this here. You, 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 can't, you can't miss me with this. There you go. Yet. Shout out to Android. But uh, yeah, so when, when uh, I heard him, and then one of the homies was on there arguing with him, and I was like, that was good for the homie to defend my honor, you know? I was like, okay, I got him. So when Boosie presented the thing for me through the alley hoop, I was like, okay, now, and I see how the social media go crazy about this stuff. I said, okay, now, and I'm monetized now. I said, oh, okay, I got it now. There you, you go. You know, take me a little time, old man, but I'm going to get it. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah, I got it now. Okay. Let's so, uh, then he said something the other day. Uh, yeah, because Birdman said they live next door to each other. I was like, well, okay, what's the address? You know, where we live at? You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, okay, I, I get it. Birdman is ashamed of 
how a lot of people going against the way I got home. Okay, I'm cool with that. So, uh, like I tell people, you know, I don't buy friendship. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, somebody correct me on my interview the other day. It's over two billion Muslims. I'm a Muslim that founded a Sunnah. So I got so many Muslim brothers I got to get to know. And, hey, man, it's cool, you know, yeah. at the end of the day. But uh, shout out to Birdman. I love him because him, Slim, Cash Money Records. Cause like, when I say Cash Money Records, I mean Wayne, BG, Turk, Juvenile, because they was the one rapping and producing all the hits. Mm. They took care of me while I was in prison. I never wanted for nothing while I was in prison, bro. And I got all my receipts. I'm going to put all that in my documentary. Because back then, they didn't have Western Union. that We had the envelopes where when they, when they send you money orders or checks, they'll stamp your envelopes. So I still had that with bourbon, I mean, with, with Baby on it, with CMR, all that on it. So I, I'm not bitter because they took care of me when I needed them. And that's you what know? I want to ask. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about the first day out of prison and what they did the first day. Tell us as far as once you got sentenced, what was it like for your first week in prison? Like when you knew you was like, okay, I'm gonna be sitting here for a minute and I'm in this thing. How was the first week? Hold oh, on, that's a good question. Um, my first week, like I had already been to juvenile, I had been to state prison, so going to the feds, I was like, all right, I'm here, you know, keep on, I was still young. But they hit you with like real time though, right? Yeah, and like I know you said you didn't process it quite no, yet. No, because I was like, because they put me in the jungle, they put me in where lion, tigers, and bears at, mm. straight killers. And at the time, blacks was beefing with whites, and a white boy was slanging that knife. Mm. And you get caught, like, this is how serious the penitentiary is. Say like how y'all from Texas. And you go shower. Two or three of your homies got to stand outside the shower while you shower. Damn. With the knives on, that's how serious that stuff was. So I didn't have time to try to worry about, man, the people, didn't, now I got to worry about surviving now. Mm. I got to try to get this law library, make sure baby don't give me the money for this lawyer, so I get this life in 20 years off me. But at the end of the day, and it's crazy to say, it was so much stuff going on to where the time going by fast because prison is like a world inside a world, man. It's like so much gossip going on. It's like a beauty salon. People shoot shooting about people. People get ran up top of their paperwork not right. People getting stabbed up, getting killed, getting robbed, getting high, getting raped. It's so much going on, man. To you know, and I worked in a bakery when I first got to prison. Was you right to the bakery? Yeah. Was there ever a moment where you was like, "This is my life now"? and I'm just going to accept it, and I'm just going to make the best out of what I have right here in, in, in prison. I like the all accept the accept part. I don't like that part what you said. Okay. I ain't know. I just would say this. I was like, I'm in here. I used to be like, man, I'm in prison. I ain't, I'm going to never get out of jail. Like, all right. But I never gave up because I was like, when I, all right, this, it was this OG. He got life. Now, he was a big uh, time drug dealer in my city, and they still in the feds. They don't like people bringing it in because they like, you know, people dip, Feds be watching all kind of stuff. But he had wrote me a letter when I first got locked up. And I was like, eh, all right, whatever. So as I, <clears throat> I was hit with an 848. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I was one of the youngest one to be charged with this kingpin. That's something with Big Meeks got. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now you give me a charge like this guy. So everybody would know about BMF. So I was charged with that. So it make it look like I had BMF money or BMF drug. And I didn't. You know, so I was, I was actually charged in my indictment for conspiracy to six ounces of heroin. But they knew this. It was other trials, and I got the paperwork. I'm gonna put it in my uh, doc, my, my uh, what you call that thing, my doc, uh, documentary, mm -hmm. uh, where people testified in other trials that I was a hitman for cash money. So now the feds take that and be like, nah, they gotta have some truth to this because too many of our informants come back telling this, this. So now they hit me with this 848. It's 20 to life. So I'm like, all right, man, I'm 23 years old. I take that. I'm gonna get out and be in my 40s, young, nice looking. I, I can do that. Baby, them got me. While I'm waiting to get sentenced, a guy I knew. That I was in juvenile jail with wore a recorder on my co-defendant, and my co-defendant was talking about stuff from the streets. They took that and they took uh, me and baby on the phone talking about something. They took the cop, the state, I got all the all the paperwork I'm telling y'all. There ain't no cap now, ain't no cap to cap now. I got the paperwork with me and baby. I got the stuff from my co-defendant, and he took that and the judge said, by the preponderance of the evidence, I feel you had something to do with these murders, I'm gonna give you life. And gave me a life. I never went to trial, I was never indicted for two homicides. I they gave me a life sentence. So I went from waiting to get 20 years to getting a life sentence. My case got overturned in 2002, and he gave me life again. Wait, so they had to use your recording and then with your co-defendant what they had from there, which you didn't know that was happening. They presented it to you and said, we're going to add this all together. Yeah. Damn. And, and hold this. Yeah. That's, cool. That's what they did, me. Yeah. That's yes. That's how they do it. Yes. Yeah, but the feds don't play. Yeah, they don't play. Damn, that's deep as fuck. I was just gonna say, cause you know, I asked that the ex about accepting, cause like my brother, right? I have a brother that's locked up and he'll tell me all the time, like, 
he's always trying to get out. And I'm like, bro, why don't you just do your time? And then, but he always looking for a way to get out. He's like, bro, you just don't understand. You ain't in here. Yeah. But when he get out, he act like he don't give a fuck about going. How old is he? Uh, he is 35 now. Uh, well, let me say this. I understand him and man, don't tell him don't get out because of this, bro. In prison, right? Let me show you how prison go. Say like all of us homies right here, right? Say I got somebody doing me a favor while I'm getting the work in. I got the work. Say I'm cool with somebody else from another state, me and him real cool, and I'm looking out for him. The homie's gonna turn on me. They're gonna either rob me, stab me up, and run me off the compound. Or if I'm going to the commissary a lot, you got some homie that is called the little soft press. Hey, yo, gangster, what's up? Man, you can get this for me, man. My people ain't seen my money. So, man, you go to the store, give, give me a little list, right? All right, I got you. Come again, man. So you got homies play all kind of crackhead gangs in prison. I, I, I honestly witnessed five young boys from D.C. that had life sentence. Rape a young boy that was from uh, Milwaukee, I think. He had like a few months to go home. He had came back on violation. Damn. And his homeboys would tell him, man, stay away from them. I ain't worried they call him in the cell. This is what they do. They beat your body because they like the box. Like, they whoop your body or they'll wrestle with you. Because, you know, a lot of guys, they work out a lot in prison. So you got some guy be like, man, I ain't with all that workout stuff. Mm. So now your endurance not up. So now guys gonna get you in that cell, they gonna wrestle with you, and rest you gonna, and before you know when they hear that, uh, uh, oh, I got him. Might whoop your body a little bit, go to your rib, go to your side, and now you tired, you tore down now. Now guess what? Come here. They taking the pants down. Damn. So but, they, no, they, 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 you saying they fighting for real, like, or they just testing you? They playing, they start out like oh, they, playing. they playing right? to see how much they, they the trying to see how you, yeah. Yeah, the butt banding is for real, but the one he like don't know he for real yet until he get the whooping his body, get the whooping and whooping and whooping, and he tie him down, and now, it's gonna either game rape or it might be a one on one. Some dude be like, man, all right, all right, I'm gonna give it, man. Don't tell him, but I'm gonna do it, man. But, you know, some, look, I heard a dude say this here. Man, put this glove in your hand, Jack, man. Your hand ain't gonna be no fag. Bro, it's just all kind of gangs that go on in prison, bro. So I understand he wanna get out of prison. Because listen to me, bro. If you don't have no, one thing about, I don't know about state, I'm gonna speak on the Fed. If you don't have your car, I mean, like, your, if Texas not behind you, they're gonna throw you to the wolves, bro. So if you go there because you got money, you saying, oh, I'm by myself, I'm on man time, I ain't doing it. You know what's gonna happen? You got guys in there that got life forever in a day, and they gonna watch you go to commissary. They gonna watch you go to visit. They gonna say, oh, he got it. Now they gonna go to your car, text it. Yo, he run with y'all? Now nah, he by himself, he ain't with us. Now nah, guess what? They gonna run out of your cell with the handkerchiefs on, they gonna have knives this long, butcher knives, mm -hmm. where that stuff at. If you got it in your butt, they gonna make you come out. Man, listen, bro. So It's wild stuff in that prison, bro. Somebody coming in, who don't have no ties to no one, should they look to link up with like Muslims or something? Like some, I'm gonna get in something quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would say this, it depends on what prison you're in. If you're in a penitentiary, yes, off top, because in a penitentiary, when it go down, this is how I go down. I'm from Louisiana, y'all from Texas. You see how we just in here just talking now? Yeah. Say we got homies out there playing basketball, Louisiana and Texas playing basketball right now. In a fight, jump all behind basketball. Mm. We got people in here might start attacking me just because they see, oh, Louisiana Tech out the fight. We get to fight in here, right? We don't know why we fighting. Yeah. We get to the whole, hey, yo, homie, man, what's up? What the, what the hell's behind? Oh, man, old boy uh, was on his butt too hard. He said he got on a hog because he was checking him. <laughs> what? You mean tell him about to lose good time? <laughs> or I'm about to get charged because I stabbed my man? You know, that just happened just recently in the Fed uh, where dudes got into, DC got into with some guy, killed the dude, and now they facing a, a murder charge, you know? Damn. So, you know, that stuff happened in prison, man. So, man, that man could get, bro. Listen to me, man. Let him out. Let him deal with it out here, man. Because you got to keep in mind, he going through the process of being wild, wild, keep going back and forth. But it's going to be a time when he might say, you know what, man? I want to stay out. Like me. I don't, listen, man, I don't never want to go back to prison. Now nah, talk about it. Bro, you know what's with the, the beauty thing, the beautiful I like what I do when I get to go to Walmart. I don't care what city I'm in, I'm going to Walmart. That's what I want to ask you about. I want to ask you about, you know, Bro. what is it? When you get it, because I, I, I feel you, because Walmart is the everyday place for everyday people. When you go to Walmart, like you just like, like you say, you like to just people watch. Man, like, man. I just like to move the car to just, just shop. Bro, so many fine, bro. Listen. Bro, talk about it. And Halle Berry's being. Bro, I be like, what the world? Bro, it's the <laughs> summertime. They letting that stuff hang out and they come with the bro. I be like, man, them people want me in prison. They got to be out of their mind. Said you said, go do it. Somebody said, was a Walmart. Man, listen, man, so many. Man. Yo. You, don't, you don't go to Target? No, nah, man, I, I like Walmart, bro. Walmart, Walmart. Listen to me, bro. 
everybody in Walmart. There you go. Now nah, for real. Everybody in Walmart, man. That's facts. Bro. Now I gotta get you because you're you're out now and you're able to talk about social things that are going on. And um I just want your thoughts on it, man. Uh we see a situation like Trade the Truth and Zero, where Zero gets jumped. Mind you, these are two legends in Houston. Yeah. And uh Zero goes on the news to say, Yeah, uh, I got beat up by Trey. He names him. Um, what are your thoughts on that as far as just that whole uh, situation that happened when you see legends like that that's from Houston here at this point? Bro, honestly, uh, I the reason why I never got on my platform and spoke out about that, because I'll be being a hypocrite. Because you got to keep in mind, I'm at eyes with a legend. Birdman, Hot Beasel, uh, Lil Nino Kel, uh, Boosie. These guys don't like me, so I get a chance to troll them every chance I get because I see how the social media going now. But as far as the physicals, because I, I try to stay out those guys' way, because like I always say, I don't want no trouble, I'm not looking for trouble. But if a fire starts, I'm going to put it out. I promise you that. Because <laughs> good brother don't mean soft brother. It just I just want to be out here and live and enjoy my life. But if you play, man, listen, I already got money saved. I got money put up so I know how to do my bid. And I got plenty of Muslim brothers in prison that love me. So I'll just be back at home. But I like it here now, and this is where I want to stay. So please, if you want to keep, you can disrespect me all you want on the social media, let's play. Let's get that. I, I'm with that. But my number's going up. Is it cool to get the fade just as long as everyone's going home? Like, hey, we can catch the fade. No, right man. I don't, listen, let me tell you something. I don't, I don't got time for no fight. No, man. I'm, bro, I'm 47 years old. I'm almost 50. I like to put them up. Man, listen. Then you got to keep in mind that this here. This was going to happen now. Back then, I would have, I, I wouldn't mind fighting, but let me tell you why I don't want to fight now because of this. Everybody got the cameras on. Right. So, what if I get, bro, what if one of them do? I'm not losing one off camera. Yeah, man, you can't knock me out and people going, they're going, they going, <laughs> man, come on, man. You knock a teeth out of my, man, that's a trophy. Right. No, man, man, nah, don't, bro, don't put your, I'm telling y'all now, don't put your hands on me, man. Listen to me, bro. <laughs> I just, <laughs> nah, because I was really, I, I, my, next, my very next question was, is there a such thing as a one on one? Like, I don't. They I don't, got him. I'm not doing that. Yeah. No. I'm not doing. Yeah. We finna, we finna me, bro. jay you, bro. I'm an old man that still look good. I don't have time for them people trying to mess nothing up. I still, you know what I'm saying? I still got a shot at this stuff, bro. So, nah, man. Nah, nah. for real. Nah, for real. I'm not gonna. Nah. Uh, Ronald Isley, man. Uh, which I think he's 80, right? Got a, got a. He got a 40 year old. No, a 35 year old. I think it is. Is he out of line or is he just living a good life? Who? Ronald Isley. Who is that? The Isley Brothers. Oh, the singer? Yeah. He got a 35 year old? Yeah. No, because you know, in Islam, we are taught to have younger women because that keeps you going, a younger woman. A lot of people don't like older women because they feel like, man, you're going to be on the sofa. I like older women, me, because I don't got time for all this cutting the car, scratching my car, flattening the tie. Don't, I don't got time for that. Don't be playing. Oh, girl, oh, girl said, nah, man. So I'm going to get me an older woman. We're going to sit down and we're going to watch TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? King Rockstar, what's up, baby? No, facts, facts. Pressure, huh? Facts. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I don't, I don't have time for that, but I, I, I understand it. I get it because, you know, young women help older men, help us. And you got to keep in mind, too, a lot of older people don't know about the social media. So, them young people, they, oh, baby, you got to do this, this how I go. Look, they got your picture here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, <laughs> facts. Now, you mentioned a name that we didn't mention last time uh, for a reason, but you mentioned. Uh, Bezo, uh -huh. and I was wondering, is it like when you go to war with someone that has so much history on you, do you not be afraid as far as them just saying some shit that, that was probably should be, hey, we ain't gonna talk about that. That was never to be for the world. Cause the social media stuff is different when you're going back and forth on social media where they might release something that you just personally didn't want the world to know. Do you be worried about that at all? No, the only time I worry, man, is when I went to surgery. Because they put you under anesthesia and then it's not a guarantee you're going to wake up. I, bro, I don't regret nothing I've done in life. My life is an open book. The world know about how gangsta come home. Some people call me rat, some people call me snitch, but at the end of the day, I'm free. Talk don't call me collect, but at the end of the day, Talk nobody's about. doing time behind me. But I don't care or I don't fear that they're going to come out. No, man. Talk about it. Guess what? <laughs> when they put something out me, oh, gangsta did this, or gangsta did that. Now I get a chance to come back and defend that if I want to on my platform and watch the numbers go up. That's it's a numbers game for me. Say what you want. Listen, like this little guy I made a lot of day to my told on his dad. Who's his father? Yeah. But I see they got numbers over there. So whenever you attach Terrence Gaines to something now, them numbers going up. That, nah. So I see the number gain now. So, but a lot of that don't affect me because 
I know how it go. I was once on a grimy cutthroat slide side. Yeah. So I know how I, how they play. I know what they do. So that don't affect me at the end of the day because I got a bulletproof emotion. Man, talk right. about it. Outside of the the phone, uh, what technology are you just like surprised about or just has been helpful for you since uh, the time you went in 23 years and getting out? What technology has come about that you like? Oh, man. Outside of the phone, outside of the cell phone. The self-checkout. Self-checkout, man. Bro, bro. Hey, when you first, hey, the, t- tell us about the first time you did self-checkout yourself. Like, tell what happened. Yeah, t- t- yeah, right. Did you, did you forget some shit? Listen, bro, look what happened. I pull up, right? I got my basket. I'm at Walmart. Just got out. Shout out Walmart. So it was a fine chick. Shout out Walmart for it. I'm like, oh, yeah, she, I'm going to go to her register. <laughs> because it got these things right here, right? And she's standing right here on the end. So I'm right there. I'm waiting on her. And she's talking to some other Walmart people, right? So I'm like, what's y'all going to come on here with a fine stuff? Come on, bring this stuff up, right? <laughs> so they looking. And then I'm like, I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. So I'm like, you going to come on? I'm like, what's up? <laughs> She said, she said, all right, boy, you got to do that yourself. I said, do it myself. What you mean, do it myself? She said, this, this the self. I said, I said, so I get to scan it. I'm like, boy, oh, shit. I, could, I could steal all kind of stuff. Yeah, like, oh, oh, shit. Let me go you know grab a TV real quick. Bro, listen. So I'm like, and she started laughing. I said, well, man, my bad. I just got out of prison. I don't know. I've been on 23 years. Too. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I ain't know. So she come and sit, but do what I wanted anyway. So she, so she come on to assist me, you know what I'm saying? So she helped me out. She started kicking it with me, showing me, and she's smelling good, got the nice little perfume going. You know, so we talked, but I didn't get a phone number nothing because I was still like, I don't, because I'm learning like, because I, I, at the time I was, I was, I was living with a female, right? Yeah. And so I didn't know how to lock the phone. Oh so, yeah, <laughs> you just open it. You wide open. <laughs> you wide. Open. We gonna play it safe, <laughs> bro. Bro, listen. Bro, listen. The girl used to. This was how she tricked me, bro. This girl, when she's to go to sleep, she's to snore, right? So I'm thinking, I'm talking to snow like, like loud, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, she good, she sleep, right? So my, and I, I didn't know about putting the phone on silent, none of that stuff. <laughs> so my phone rang all night. Because people had them home, so people hitting me up three, four in the morning, right? There I go. So mind you now, when Queen France come in the picture, so she sent me her, showing me pictures of her. She got a model agency, you know, she thick, got her. So I got this in my phone, like I say, it's all innocent, but this girl creeping in my phone. So Queen Fan comes, she said, man, somebody be playing on my phone. So I'm like, well, man, you know, you into the industry, you be around a lot of celebrity people do video. Somebody could be playing. I don't know. I know the people my house, they good. They don't play that challenge because this girl 42 years old. Right. So she records the girl voice, right? Mm. So Queen France like, man, it's a country with a country voice. I said, well, man, listen, my people be sleep. I know she don't play them crackhead games, right? <laughs> so she hit the recorder. I said, man, she down bad. This is the girl where I live at. Oh, <laughs> I said, yo. Yo, so she going in my phone, getting these girls' number, harassed. Yo, you mess with gang? Yo, da, da. I said, man, that's some teenagers. Like, girl, you down, man. Now, mind you, she got to do that. Call her five, six in the morning when I first got home. Waking me up on my sleep. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't say nothing because I'm living in her house. Yeah, like, right. I, I, I can't say nothing, right? But she doing her. I'm like, I ain't tripping because I get to go to Walmart. That's why I get my peace of mind. You stay home, <laughs> right, I'm going here. Right, right, you see what I'm saying? Right. So she in my phone getting all these numbers and playing these girls' phone, bro. So um, <clears throat> I, I didn't know about the stuff, like I say. And, um, Damn. I didn't catch on to it till it was too late. So uh, I got my homie to put my little thing, my little code. Then I'm like, man, I ain't got nothing to hide. I ain't, because I don't play with females. I don't tell females that we're going to be in a relationship. Uh, you my yeah. old lady, my girl. I don't play them again because I know how serious that stuff could get. You know facts, what I'm saying? Facts, facts. So, and I'm too old, but I can't, I can't move like I used to. I don't know how to, okay, girl, if you be over here, I'm going to call me back later. I, I can't. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. I ain't, I ain't smooth like I used to, but I'm, I'm you, not, bro. You, so you, don't just, throw, you don't throw the love word out? You, you don't just accidentally say that say that shit? Yeah, I tell everybody I love them. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you fucking up. <laughs> no, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why, exactly. Because love means it's here. <clears throat> when I say I love it, mean, I care, I, I care that you make it home safe. There you go. I care that, you know, you can take care of yourself, your bills, whatever. So when I say, man, I love you, it don't mean like I'm in love with you or head over heels where you come back knocking on the door or you, you know, I'm coming to meet the parents or the grandparents or them the bad children you got. Yeah. Not that low. I just say I love you. Like if you need help, I'm here for to help you. You know, you gotta pay a bill. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. You know, there that's you go. I say, yeah, I love you. So I tell all my homegirls, all right, I love you. To no, the day. Right. All right, love that's you. Text, right. I love you. You know what I'm saying? I've always, I always ask this question to all right, um, baby. I always ask this question to anybody who um who has done some time and they dealing with a young lady on the outside. Let's say you 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 had a significant amount of time, but let's just say you had a relationship with somebody and you know they were supposedly holding you down, but when you get home, they got a baby. 
do you care about that? Does that bother you? Do you still are y- y'all still together? What what's the protocol? What's the next step after you, you see this little baby that you know ain't yours? But they've been you holding this. you down this whole time. All right, let me ask you this. While she was holding me down the whole time, do, did I know she had the baby then? Or I come home to the baby? It was a surprise. Like, surprise. Yeah, honey, was, it was definitely a surprise. Honey, I'm home. One of them surprises? Yeah, honey. I'm- <laughs> I'm like, how you made that? Yeah. That's the first thing I want to know. How you did, I know, common sense is free, all I got to do is use it. Right. So I know she had said, but I'm like, how you, you know we be acting shock and dumb. Like, how you did that? Right. right? But I'm like, now, because you got, you got Terrence and Gangster yeah. y'all talking to now. Yeah. So now, you got to keep in mind, when I was Gangster, the living legend, you know, hot boy running the block, I'm, I'm, I'm back out here, woo woo. Oh, I'm out of there. As a matter of fact, that same, so like, that's your all gone. Okay. Now, Terrence, I'm going to be like, man, you did that. Now I want to know this here. The baby father. First of all, is he in the son life? Is he still alive? Like, you know, what y'all got going, what's going on? Because I'm like, I ain't going to lie. When it, I love, I love hard. So I don't play the fitness. So I, I get on that like, who, who that is? What's going on? Like, you know, I be a little insecure when it come down to my woman. Right. I don't like my, I don't want my woman with no male friends, period. Right. I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, we just cool. Y'all be called to talk. No, man, because I know when women, women get vulnerable, they need a shoulder to lay on. And the dude gonna hate on me because the minute I do something wrong, he gonna say, I told you not to mess with it. I know he wasn't right. Or he did it. No, man, just stay away from men, period. Ain't no such my thing wife. as play brother. No. Uh, yeah, my, my bestie, man. nah, all that, uh, BF, nah. If it's no. a, if, if he no. got a dick, no. <laughs> it's fact. No. <laughs> Now, hey, so I want this is a time where we get to sit and promote, man. You got the shirt on, man. Gangsta yeah. Original Hot Boy, man. You, yeah. you, your podcast. How is it for you podcasting right now, man? How is it for you being able to, uh, you know, what you couldn't do while you were inside, you are able to get out and just give your testimony for the world to kind of react. And again, you be in the comments. You be, you be, you be interactive. How's it, how is that for you? You know what? I really, really enjoy that. Let me tell you why. Because this is something that keep me occupied. I know I don't have to go out to the streets. I don't have to go to the block. I don't have to go... Yeah. Running them streets of the club nowhere because this is enough right here to keep me busy. There you go. And I'm doing something positive. Plus, I'm really setting all this up because my main goal, bro, out of it all, is the children. Like I was telling somebody, I don't know if I tell it in my uh, interview I did the other day. When I was in prison, I only prayed for two things. Mm-hmm. I just prayed and asked the Lord to give me freedom and to give me a chance to get home while my mother's still living to take care of her. My turn to give, me, give her the love she gave me. And mm-hmm. I got this. So everything else, don't, I don't care about nothing else. But now I'm like, these children need us because I see so much stuff going on, right? And I'm like, I have a voice now. So uh, the lady who interviewed me yesterday, she was like, you know, how do we do this? I said, it starts with us because we get on this platform and talk about all we want. But you got you to gotta lead by example. You mm. know what I'm saying? So once we start speaking out and the people see you doing stuff, then they're going to gravitate to it. Do you have any toy drives or, you know, giveaways about the fact that, that anybody that wants to help out can, can jump tap yeah. in with? What I just did, right, I just received... Uh, my paperwork from Secretary of State saying I'm incorporated. Uh, Congrats. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I got my, my, actually, next week, Saturday, Saturday's coming up. I have an appointment set up with the bank where I get to open up the bank account for my yeah. nonprofit. Um, I got my people working on a 501c3. I got my homegirl, Cece, in New Orleans. She have a big nonprofit. She's real big with this stuff. Where she got like, uh, she said, she said, Gangs, I can get you like 50 to 100 something toys for your uh, nonprofit right now. You know what I'm <clears> saying? <throat> so they really, they got, I got people been reaching out already, you know, to help me with it. So uh, I just want to make sure I had all the paper, had everything ready. So when I step out to get the talk, I really got stuff to back. Like, yeah, I, I'm legit. There you, you know go. What I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, well, that's going down. I'm going to be all in Dallas. I'm going to be all in, I'm going to be, we all going to be all over because I know it's children in the ghetto everywhere that need help. Need help. Oh, yeah, no, nah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's why, uh, well, you know, 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 yeah, we want to make sure, know. Um, you know, bring- again, I want you to, you know, uh, tag all the podcasts you're on. Um, and uh, shout out, you know, you had a, uh, Family cousin Jed on there on one on one of the episodes yeah. a couple about a week ago. Yeah, uh, Cooper Road, you know, uh, yeah. shout out cousin Jed. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, I want you to make sure you uh, tap on any of your uh, your nonprofit, your podcast, your YouTube channel. Uh, okay, Gangster. This is what I have guy. y'all. Gangster, the original high boy. This is my YouTube channel. I say that right. yeah, YouTube channel. Please subscribe. There I can you get go. An interview, I just upload an interview. So once everybody look at this here. Street, real street, like I had to piggyback off y'all. I was like, Thank man. You. Yeah, no, listen. we appreciate it. No, listen. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. y'all. Let's, <laughs> let's do the give it. Give and take. That. I said, boy, they're the half of me. I said, okay, they're, they're jumping. <laughs> I said, I, I got to get on their bandwagon. You know, so I got to ride this yeah, here, 300K right? in a day. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? 10,000 in the live chat. We was like, God Bro, damn. Bro, listen. Thank you all for, for the support. 
not please definitely. continue to support because one thing I know when you all support real life street star because these are some good bro. Y'all got me so comfortable. I, I wish I'd had a blanket. Yeah, we had we should have, we should have the Ottoman supposed to kick his feet up. Yeah, yeah, we supposed to kick his feet up. Uh, and then you, bro, think about this though. But all jokes aside, listen, you had people like Lil Boosie on his sofa. You had uh, I about to say cousin Charles. Uh, 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 he cuts me out, huh? Charleston White on his sofa with his mace. Yeah. Then you, then you had the legendary. Uh, 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 Hurricane Chris. Hurricane Chris. Y'all just had King Rockstar in here. Yeah. Bro, man, listen, man. I, bro, I'm just a person that was a part of Cash Money, a part of Hot Boys, but I'm not a celebrity. <clears throat> I'm not a rap star. I'm not a, you know, I don't, so I'm, I'm loving this stuff, man. Don't you find it crazy you got out and you immediately like took off on it? Like, it takes a lot of people a long time to get 100K views, and you doing that shit damn near every time on your own platform. But guess what? That's crazy. When God there for you, man, they can't take nothing from you, bro. That's true. God got a plan for me, and, and I just, I'm just following the strip. I'm going, going, going. And I know not to detour off the strip. I'm not going to get out there with a bunch of the, ah, nah. That's not my role now. My lane is over here with these children. Yeah, I'm going to keep it going, build up the platform, because once I get everybody, okay, listen, man, I got this donation. I need y'all to help out. We got these children we need to go talk to. But I, like me and Turk been politicking. Reginelli, like I just met. Shout Earth out Kings. Turk. I just met uh, King Rockstar. I'm going to hear these guys and talk to these children, man. You know there what I'm you saying? There you go. But um, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gangsta the Original Hot Boy. Nah, I mean, um, you live every day, like damn near every day, right? Every day yeah, you pretty I'm much go here. live. Yeah, no, nah, it's, bro, it's every day. It's a politic to people. I got yeah, to talk to people. It's politicking. It'd be fun, too, because you got to keep in mind, like I say, just keeping me out of trouble. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something, bro. And this is the God honest truth. I have a job, right? So I pay my bills. So when I'm inside sometimes, I be like, man, you know, the streets, you know, I, I, I know how you can make fast money. You know what I'm saying? So, but then I be like, I just did 23 years, 10 months. I know the feds watch, I know they watch me. They still mad with me, they still got stuff, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. they feel. So <clears throat> my thing is, when I'm on that podcast, and like I had got sick and I missed for three days. People, man, where you at, man? We need you on the line. And I know I help a lot of people. I can have them going. But they don't know they keep me going. Nah, there you They're go. They're helping me too. So we helping one another's therapy. You there know you what I'm go. Saying? So I enjoy it, bro. Like a lot of people, like my people, like I just tell my mother, brother, Jahai, he got Concrete Chronicles podcast, right? He get upset when people, because he's an aggressive guy. Yeah. Six, five, big guy, you know? So I be like, listen, bro, be patient. I say, because the people who for us, all our loved ones, our people that's on here that rock with us, they're going to get them. Yeah, be and patient. Like, bro, you online. Such a day. I said, I told you, bro, just sit back, bro. One subscriber at a time. They're going to get them, you know what I'm saying? One subscriber so, at a time. But I'd be like, I welcome the negative too because it, this is this what I love about it. When you come on my platform, you come on my Instagram or you come on my YouTube channel and you say, oh, you a rat or you snitch or you just any kind of disrespectful thing you say, you know what I say? Well, for you to follow me or you coming on, because me, if I don't like you, if you a rat or snitch, back when I was in the game, I couldn't stand a rat or snitch. I'm not about to come around you. Do not come around me. You not about to say nothing. Just beat it. So right. for them guys to take their time out to come see what I'm doing, either they don't have a light, they're miserable, they bored, or they intrigued with me, man. Now, something about me they like, man. Now I do got to ask you before we go. Um, just your thoughts on uh, Takashi Six Nine, who of course is a Mexican Latino rapper. He embedded himself with the blacks, the Bloods in New York. Ended up doing a lot of making a lot of money, but also was into some street stuff, and then pointed each of his cohorts out as they, uh, you know, violated him, uh, you know, personally is what he said. What are your thoughts on Takashi Six Nine? I just, I'm just curious. I don't know the fans want to know. Like, what are your thoughts on what he did, <laughs> bro? Even though, but well, let me say the ratness, ratness, snitching, snitching. That's not right, right? Because what you're doing is taking somebody up from their family, somebody up from the street. Mm. You know, like, honestly, bro, like, we, when we in the streets, we sign up for this stuff. I don't know his, because I know he said that he wasn't, he didn't know, he wasn't aware of a lot of stuff. I know he came with that. So I don't know his excuse. But when you in the streets, that ain't cool, bro. It ain't right. Because, like I say, when we, because I used to hate, bro, I couldn't stand, I, I didn't call a lot of murder cases. So, you know, I couldn't stand people who, when he gave a state, he read it. You know, I had a tattoo. I wanted to get all rats must die. Law forgiving for those forsaken me. Had the mouse trap. I was gonna get all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, bro, um, it wasn't right. But you gotta know what you gotta understand is too. Me and him have two different paint jobs. Did you ever have somebody rat, rat on you? Like, yeah. Somebody like by you know this person ratted on you. Like, 
he did it. Some of my charge. Or yeah, like whether a charge, whether or not. With a guy who I was cool with, Walter Terry, Walter Terry called on my court. Man, he was cool in juvenile jail. We was on the same tier together. He waited till I moved and then went to my court, went to the feds and said, hey, I think I can get, I got some on gangsta. Ah. And got the recorder. He wore a recorder. I got the paper. He wore a recorder in the jail and went to my court and like, hey, my court, when my mom used to play the tape, I said, man, play the tape. So my court would get up, urinate, flush the toilet, wash his hand, and the dude would, I had a gun I called Calio. The project I was beefing with, it was my favorite gun. So, <clears throat> they took that gun, and that's how I got a life sentence. Mm. I'm on the phone with baby. I said, look, man, the people think I ran through that gun, and my homie ran through that gun. It wasn't me. So, but my co-defendant got caught because he riding in the project in a Q45 with an AK on the back seat. Mm. So when they pulled him over, the homie jumped out and run, throw the gun. They think it's me. Oh, we about to put a warrant out for uh, gangster arrest. My co hey, man, they about to pull up. So I called baby, look, man, I'm about to turn myself in right quick, get the lawyer, bomb me out right quick, da da da. So the feds got my phone tap. So they tell the state, oh, that ain't wasn't gangster. He on the phone fussing right now. Uh, so we wouldn't don't don't arrest him, leave him alone. Because I'm under investigation, so this is gonna mess up their investigation too. Mm -hmm. So they get the police the department to fall back from me. But they were trying to put a gun charge on me and it wasn't mine. I would I was in front of my door in broad daylight. The guy running through the gun, oh that was game, we know that was game. That was the police saying. Damn. So they about to put a warrant, but but word got to me, so I'm on the phone fussing about it. My phone tap, the feds hear it, they contact the police department, fall back, that wasn't him. Oof. But they took that statement that me and baby talking, and they used it at my court hearing. And gave me life. Because I was talking about that stuff, man. That stuff's serious, bro. Nah, very. Got but, but back to your question. The thing is, I'm a black man. So our blacks, they keep their foot on a black's neck. He's a Latino. So the whites, Latino, and some blacks going to support him regardless. Yeah. He's an entertainer. You see how he be on? I saw him on that. I said, look at that young boy. Oh, this house here. This a, is this a house. He got a bunch of watches and cars. That boy living. Living. You know what I'm saying? Through the Latino community, they going to take care of him, yeah. Because guess what? He testified on some blacks. Right. Nah, they, there you go. Bro. <laughs> nah, for <free. laughs> I mean, you keep it 100, Simple bro, as so that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, he elects it, so his people, gonna, they're going to support his music. He, then I'm not a rapper either, so I don't know how to rap. I can't rap. I used to bust cap. So now, this new thing for me, you know, I, I don't got nothing to do, so they all they, oh, game. But, you know, hey, man. Hey, uh, we go. The pod, the new, the new, the next podcast, my civilian life. <laughs> there you go, bro. Fact, do you, bro. Do you think if you would have started rapping that maybe, like, you could have like avoided some of this? Like, if you'd have just picked up the mic, bro. You know what's crazy? I'm happy you said that because, uh, in my uh, paperwork that when I was, my phone was tapped, baby would call me, bro. Come on, go on tour with us. Go on tour, bomb married to the hood, the project. Man, I hang up on because I was getting heroin money. Anybody who knows who see heroin know that's money. So you talking about going on tour, what am I gonna get out of that? You know what I'm saying? The one time I say, well, bro, let me hide my PO, I'm gonna see if I can come out tour, go on tour with you all. But man, <laughs> yo, now Man, bro, bro, cause you, I mean your life would have been crazy different. Yeah, it <laughs> would. Cause I mean, even BG, right? Uh back then, like true story on that, he wasn't just no hell of a rapper back then, but he was like, he just had the streets. Yeah. He had he the stories. That stuff, yeah. He was talking that gangster stuff. So and you keep, see, people gotta keep in mind. BG was in the hood, front of the hood, so he going around all the hoods loved him. So he gonna rap that gangster talk. So this is what we went for New Orleans. That's what we know, chopper. We know we, we you know what I'm saying? It's going down. Like he had a song, he had a song, baby didn't wouldn't allow him to perform the song at the concert. So I'm like, why y'all let him make this man? Why y'all allow him to make this song? Y'all won't let him perform it. Right. It was a song called Them Boys at War. Man, that song was so hard, them boys at war, so that Magnolia Kelly, them boys at war. So all the man's gonna get the crowd hype. Cause we was really at war. You know what I'm saying? So he had a song called Them Boys at War. I said, you know what I'm saying? Bro. Man, listen, bro. So, yeah, I mean, but I don't know because think about it. Look at C Murder, look how he turned out. Yeah, you're right. No, so you got a lot of rappers yeah. that still attach to the streets and do, you know what I'm saying? And I was too deep in the streets, so. I don't know, but now can somebody write a verse for me or something? Let me go ahead and rap. Let me. <laughs> it could be coming. It could be coming. You don't even want that shit now either, bro. Dude. Yeah, this I do. But let me tell you what I want. Let me tell you what I want the rap thing because I'm going to give me a one hit of quitter, make me some meals, and I'm going to retire. There you I, go. I, one I, hit one. I, now yeah. you got to go on tour. <laughs> you got to the tour. hot boys, the hot boys. And it's just facts. <laughs> I ain't going on tour. Now I'll do the virtual thing. Y'all can see me on, on the screen. <laughs> I'll be in the metaverse. I'm going to do it from the metaverse. I ain't going to. Bro, listen. It take a lot for them rappers to get up on that stage. People be throwing stuff at them, bro. I would've been a jump man. Listen, bro, we ain't doing man, that. Have, have you put on a VR headset? Have you put on VR? 
What is that? Oh no, we gonna do that next. Okay. We gonna bring we hey the next real life street stars video. Uh, <laughs> Gang, Terrence Gangster Williams in the metaverse. Uh, <laughs> we gonna do it. <laughs> Boxing, uh, man. Hey, for those that want to follow the platform, uh, tell them each platform to follow, man. Tell them how to follow you, man. Tell them how to get at you. Follow, no subscribe. There you go, Gangster, the original hot boy. That's my personal YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. Please do hit the likes. I just uploaded, a, I got a part two coming up for y'all on, on the interview I did last night. Um, follow, please subscribe to my Capity Cap podcast, Queen France and I do that together. Shout out Queen France, the Capity Cap, that, uh, relationship questions, all that kind of other oh, shit. Oh, that's up in the umbra. Yo, man. Uh, I have an Instagram page, it's Terrence, T-E-R-A-N-C-E, -E, Gangster Williams Home, that's all one word. That's the only Instagram page I own, that's the only one I operate myself. Um, I have a face, Facebook page, it's Terrence Emmanuel with my whole government name. That's my Facebook page. Um, I be on Queen uh, Queen France World, her uh, uh, YouTube channel. She have an Instagram is Official Queen France, Queen France Agency. Um, I have a uh, Concrete Chronicles podcast. Um, boy, my sister's gonna be mad with me, man. I always mess her name up, bro. <laughs> Y'all might have to pause and let me call her or something. <laughs> she got Celebrity Chef. Fork in a row. Fork, Fork in a row. row. Fork in a row. There you Instagram. go. Instagram. Please uh, subscribe to her. Uh, my, my other sister, uh, Beauty Bays, 20 underscore soap. Uh, sister did time in the fed, bro. Oh. She, she did eight years. Come home, start her own soap line, do her own soap. Um, Very uh, dope. Ph phenomenal underscore uh, braid, braider. Um, my little sister, Kitty Black, she have an Instagram page. page. Uh, 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 my other homegirl, my little sister, uh, Tamika, she have lavish lens. Now, you know, these, these people here who have uh, 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 doing stuff independently, you know. There you go. Um, uh, Javonda, she got a clothing line at the name of her son. He was part of the bird gang. It's Tayway. Um, I want you all to support these people. You know, they got Instagram go. pages. Um, who, who else? Oh, Brian Glaze Gibb, because I'll be on his channel too. I'll be, I be jumping on everybody. Everybody, everybody get into it. Oh, uh, a Turk just invited me on his. Uh, Shout out Turk. Uh, was that last night or night? Yeah, I think last and night. Last night, last night, last night. Invited me on his thing. Um, Reginetta be calling me in. Uh, I got. A, I just downloaded my. Uh, let's call it the clubhouse. So I'm trying. To oh, you on clubhouse now? I don't know oh, how to work it, oh, he about to talk to y'all. Yeah, he but about I don't to know how to work it. So you gonna learn? You gonna learn coach, quick? You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> uh, I got a, a beagle thing. I don't know how to work that yet, but I be planning there. So I'm just learning this stuff. All that stuff, bro, that I be on. I get on all those platforms because it keeps me busy. Keeps there me you occupied. go. I don't worry about the streets. You there know? you go. That's enough for me to, I'll be like, oh, it's time to pray. So, you know, oh, I got to go to sleep now. Oh, I got to do this. You know what I'm saying? So I have stuff lined up, man. Like I got to talk to some children uh, on the 8th. When the 8th is? Today, it's coming. Day? Oh, yeah. It's coming in about yeah, three, three days. days. Yeah, three days. I talked to some children. I got a thing. I got a thing set up in Canada. I think on the 18th of September. Oh, damn. You got your passport? 14. You about to move around? No, nah, I ain't gonna lie about the lie about the cap, but no, I'm gonna be on the thing. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be out there. Hey, let me get my beep before I forget, man. Yeah, no, nah, for real. Shout out the beepers, man. Yeah, I've been forgot my stuff. Made a hundred thousand uh, on the beeper. Listen, uh, I got that coming up. I got something coming up on the 14th. Uh, I got a thing where I got some children, gonna be a hundred children uh, at this charter school in New Orleans. Uh, I gotta speak to them. Definitely. Blessings, blessings. Um, what else I got? Um, Queen France gotta interview me. Uh, I got a lot of stuff, Robbie. Right? Yeah, on my September calendar. sounds cool. Yeah, September sounds kind of lit. So yeah, I, you, September September sounds crazy for you. So and listen, oh, know what else I got to do in September? I'm rushing now. I'm trying to finish up the documentary because I got so I can get the guy to edit the documentary because I want to put it out in uh, November, the day I was born, November four. I don't celebrate birthdays and holidays. However, I just feel that's my day I was born, and the people might be like, you know, we're gonna support that. This game's a birthday. That's we're it. Nine ninety nine. An attractive that. day. Yes. Exactly. So. Uh, I got that going. I'm trying to get that together. Uh, uh, my homeboy Eric from New Orleans. Uh, my, my homeboy James. Y'all might know him. That's Toya who had the baby who married to Wayne. Oh, Wayne. yes, yes, definitely. Her little brother James. I teamed up with him and my homeboy Eric, and we writing out the, the original Hot Boys movie. Ooh. We writing it every day we get together for like okay. an hour. And look, they younger, so I be telling them different. Like, yo, OG, y'all was like, I said, yo, man, yeah, come on, look, well, let's put a little spin on that because we don't need to get an indictment. We nah, a little, <laughs> little spin. You know the saying? peoples so, and places and faces might change. Yeah, man, you know, they yeah. be intrigued because I be telling them how the hot boys were and how we got into it with the Gotti boys. So, you know, when we putting all this in our movie, you know, so we, I check in with them and they, they doing real good, man. So I just stay busy, man, because I be trying to, and I know I might be forgetting somebody. Oh, I got a shout out. Let me tell you, I got a shout out, man. Yeah, this has been my best friend. This has been my best friend. He the only one Brock could save from when I was in prison. 
that everything that's been going on with me, he been 100 with me, bro. It's my homie Hank, Henry Warner. Hank, Henry Hank, good dude, man. He been there for me, man. 1,000, man. Shout out to Henry, to Hank. Shout um, out to Hank, my brother man. Chill Wheel. Um, shout out a lot Chill more Wheel. People, but I ain't about to name all y'all, so. The, well, I got somebody that's in prison. I got to shout out my, my, my brother, baby, man. He's from Pensacola, man. He's been locked up since he was a young juvenile. Um, uh, Pooh from Pensacola. Oh, I'm going to tell y'all now. I'm going to give y'all this here, but don't steal my idea. I got a, uh, 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 what you call that thing? Uh, uh, the rappers with a, uh, a soundtrack. No, not a, a mixtape. Mm. I got a mixtape that I'm about to put out. Um, should I give y'all the title now? Yeah, real life street stars. Okay, okay I'm going to give y'all the title, man. It's called From the Streets to the Pen. Because I got I like dudes it. in the pen gonna be rapping too. I got some guys that's cold, man. So I got Oh them. man, nah, so I, I, I know there's out. so much talent. I know there's so much talent yeah, that's that's, that's put away in the, in the pen, man. Yeah, I got that coming out. So I've been busy, man. I'm doing a lot of stuff, man. So uh I got a lot of rappers that hit me on my Instagram page and when they hit me on they send me their music, I be like, I might sometimes I might not listen to it. I just put it on I press that button. Cause listen, that's another thing y'all. I'm learning how to work this Instagram. So when y'all send me that music, it's a certain kind of way you gotta send it because sometimes they send it to me, I can't put it in my reel. So you got to sit in a, like a picture somewhere where I can press that little arrow and then I can put it in my reel and I let it play. So if y'all send me that stuff, there's a certain way you got I don't know how to do it, the people do it. <laughs> but I press it and I support everybody. I don't care who you are. There you go. I'm going to support you, man. I'm going to post it. You ain't got to pay me for it, so don't hit me. Tell me I'm going to tell y'all now. Don't send me no text now because y'all going to read this, hear this. I mean, don't send me no text about uh, how much you're going to charge me to promote or put my music. I don't charge that stuff. But if you ask me, I'm going to give you my... Uh, with the cash app, if you want to send me something, you can send yeah, me bless something. It. But I'm not charging nobody. I'm gonna post that stuff. If you, I'm gonna let the people know if you garbage or not. I'm not gonna <laughs> no, pay you Facts. I'm gonna post it. That. I'm gonna post it. We'll take donations. I don't mind posting this. I got a platform. I'm gonna show love. So that's what I do. Do you feel like Slim watched the last interview? Yeah, they all watched that. Oh, they okay. Slim, all of them. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they, let me they, tell they, you something, bro. Yeah. Cause I mentioned something, right? It's a dude, and I'm happy. I'm happy you said because I forgot this on my interview. I'm gonna say this on here. It's favoritism with the snit stuff because you got Hot Beasel, Cito, Tonto, Nino, they follow a known snitch. This snitch read it on my homie that saying, I ain't go to right now, got my homie, gotta go do, if my homie get off this life sentence, once he get off this, he gotta go do, do 10 years in the feds. And they follow him and they know about this. But let me tell you how I know people watched it because the snitch, what he did, he contacted my homie and go to say, man, what's up, man? I thought we were gonna keep this on the wraps. So yeah, I'm about to expose him. And he watching this here. <laughs> and they following him and they know the deal. So I'm gonna make their people who follow them tell them who the snitch is. There you go. Don't be y'all biased. I'm gonna be shocked when y'all find out who this is. Man. Oh man. Real I life she's talking. I just don't want to expose it now because it, 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 it's, it's coming. It's coming. Right? It's coming. But let me just say this here. The reason why I haven't said this because I want to say it only because this is a big platform. The reason why I haven't said it, bro, is because my man reached out to me and goes, like, listen, man, he be looking out, he be paying for my law, he be doing this and this. So don't expose him. It's like, all right. <sighs> but he, but he, but he got a big name. I'm gonna just say that. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Is, is he a rapper? He rap, yeah. He's a, he rap. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Way. Well, hey, y'all gonna be shocked when y'all they, get it. They gonna watch this and then they still gonna be questioning, like, oh, who we talking? I hey, mean, that's what I want to do. But listen, this this ain't no cap here, man. There we go. Listen there we go. Me, this ain't no cap here. God is my witness, oh, man. And y'all don't know. I don't play by my religion. God is my witness, but. I'm just gonna leave it there because he contacted my man. My man hit me. Oh man, I was like, all right, I'm gonna let up. But let me tell you why I'm really exposed because I feel like this here. I'm gonna be honest. When I got out, I hit it. I hit. I got it. I reached out to him on this girl I live with. Yo, what's up, man? Because I'm like, we, you know, we family, we homie, right? He don't hit me back. I'm like, oh, maybe he don't because he got a lot of followers, right? But maybe he ain't see it. All right. <laughs> so when I got my platform, I hit him. He ain't hit me back. I said, oh, he taking a side. All right, I got something for you. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, it's coming. And we're gonna leave it right there, goddammit. Terrence Gangster Williams, the living legend. The living legend. Wow. New Orleans in the motherfucking building. You are a real life street star. We salute, man. Hey yo, hey yo, y'all, this is my son. He just called from the Fed right now. Hey, What's up, boy? Talk hey, yo, to him. Terrence, I'm doing an interview with real life street star. Boy, you about to go worldwide, boy. About to touch a meal. You they hear you. Say what's up. Put hey, put it to you, put it to your neck. Put it to your neck. Oh, say what's up. What's up with y'all, man? What's good, baby? Let them know who you is, where you from, boy. Oh, I'm chilling, though, man. Oh, fuck. Ah, hold it down to that motherfucker, man. We vouching hey, for you, man. I was telling him I used to ride them dirt bikes, boy, when you was home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all over. I'm, I'm, I'm worldwide on dirt bikes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yo. You got, you got something for Meek Mill then, bro. You got something for Meek Mill. <laughs> yeah. I got real fans. Don't get them on the bike. I got real fans. He got a, uh, he got a, he got an Instagram page too. What, what's his Instagram page? What's your Instagram is called? Oh, you get what his name? Say it. Tell the people. Phone get a boat. 
Funky the Goat. Funky the Goat. That's his Instagram. We about to, hey, we, we gonna put that in the comments. We about to turn you up. And, and before we leave, fan question, they said, what's up with the Funky Four? I never hear you mention him. Funky Four. Hold up, look, Taron, look, I'm going to call you back. Can you, what time are they going to lock you down? I can't hear you, man. I'm going to call you right back. I got a question I got to answer. Oh, you want to hold on? Hold on, boy. Hold on. Funky for. All right, I'm going to put this. Because he in Angola now, right? He got like 100-something years. Mm. We were beefing. I'm talking about like, this Willow Street, right? Yeah. My mother lived right here on Willow Street. Funky Four live like, right, like maybe a block from us on the same block, like right here. And that lady, st- Claudia, all stay down here. We were actually with AKs. Uh, that's who shot OG Booby Black on Mall. That's how serious that was. Mm. He got hit. I'm going to give y'all this because this is my documentary. He got hit. And then if something went down in the hospital behind all that, that name they called. That was some real big stuff. So I just stayed away from that, but they asked I had to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why that's why you don't mention it so much, cause you know I had to, documentary, I, documentary. I had to answer that, but well, damn it, man. Yeah, this is another legendary interview, man. Once again, Terrence Gangster William, man. You are a real life three star. The beep was the chains. God damn it, the original hot boy in the building, man. Wow. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah.